So, what is an elemental captive? Hi, this is Daryl Chesser and welcome once again to Sea Life TV. And today I'm going to be doing another one of my uh, writings, which I've been doing recently. And this one is entitled Elemental Captive. Interesting. Let's get started. First of all, liturgy, ceremony, tradition, all of these are good things. Except when it comes to faith in Christ Jesus and salvation. The human elements and traditions can absolutely exist in worship of Christ Jesus, but they must never be substituted for faith in the finished work of Christ on that cross. The smells, the bells, the, well, the robes, the choirs, the liturgy from great orators, the reverence and ceremony are powerful things to we humans. But only one thing can save you and I and bring us eternal life, and that is Christ Jesus. And you're believing that he is Lord alone, and that his Father and ours in heaven raised him from the dead. In Colossians 2, Paul writes to the Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 through 15, see to it that no one takes you captive with hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental or earthly, demonic, spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity or the Godhead lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He, Jesus, is head over every power and every authority. In him, you and I were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Our whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when we were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him, or some of you might say buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins, 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 when you were still a sinner, when you had no idea about God or the things of God, and most of us had no purpose, no plan, no right to God. Most of us weren't Jews. We had no testimonies and no covenants, and we had no right to approach God. But this says, let's go back, when you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. Wow. Let's read some more. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He's taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Uh, stop there for a minute. What was nailed to the cross? This says, he canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. Jesus, or our Father in heaven, God, has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Who was nailed to that cross that day? Jesus. Jesus. All our sins were put on him. All of the legal indebtedness for our shortcomings, for our sin, for our unrighteousness was put on him and nailed to the cross and taken away. Let's go further. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, having taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he, Christ Jesus, 
made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Wow. Wow. Look at that again. Triumphing over them, the legal indebtedness and the powers and authorities, by the cross. <clears throat> this is amazing to me. And it says he disarmed the principalities and powers. That means they were armed before. Now, against the believer, they're not anymore because of what happened here. What happened here? Condemnation was the weapon, and condemnation was nailed to that cross because the legal indebtedness, all of the requirements of the law, were faithfully executed by Jesus Christ. Oops, I hit that mic, sorry. By Jesus Christ and his death on that cross. Wow. Now, many people say, well, Satan's got no weapons anymore. I'm going, no, 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 not towards us. Not in Christ, he does not. However, if you start going back towards the elemental principles, when you start, somebody in something starts lying to you and says, hey, we need to get back to the law. We need to go back to those elemental uh, uh, principles of the world. Touch not, taste not, stay seasons, months, you know, special celebrations. Um, you're, you're starting to get to a place where with the law, if you don't keep it all, a curse is on the other side of it. So now, do you see the weapon is brought back to bear? It is God's weapon, but it can't, but it can't be used uh, properly by Satan against the believer anymore. He tries to do it, and we buy it because we've heard enough teaching, mixed message teaching about law and, and grace, and believe that somehow we had something to do with our salvation or our righteousness, and it wasn't a free gift. It wasn't him and his righteousness that we live in, not our own. So we begin to move back to elemental traditions or elemental, uh, we become elementally captive again. We believe that special days and special times, ooh. Anyway, I kind of got off course there. Let's get back to this. I'm going to start reading it. All I'm telling you is, Satan's been, and his, his crew have been disarmed to the believer. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now that's your decision. You can either believe what the word says, who you are now in Christ and what Christ has done at that cross and what was nailed to that cross and what went to the tomb. All of the weapons against the believer were gone that day. He has to convince us to go back and pick up and dust off this old thing, elemental principles. Okay, let's go. Uh, all of our devotion is to Christ Jesus and our Father in heaven. We owe no allegiance to tradition or ceremony. Look at the story of the 10 lepers in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee as he was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. This guy was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Whoa, let me explain. Jesus sends these lepers to be checked by the priest so they could be declared clean according to the Judaistic or uh, what's the law? Uh, yes, the Levitical law. There was a whole process. They check them, they go over them, 
they, uh, you know, uh, and, and then they come back seven days later. They, and if they're found to be cleansed, then there's this whole purification sep- uh, ceremony that, that has them come, you know, can come get them back in the camp. But there's not instructions in there for healing, really. There's just instructions for cleansing. Now, these guys were going to go. Jesus sent them back to go check to see if they were cleansed. Now, they're turning around and going that direction was a clear sign that they were moving in faith, right? But they were Jews. The rest of those guys were probably Jews, so they went to the priest. But this one Samaritan guy, the one that came back, he got he got probably halfway there, or maybe a third of the way there, and said, wait, 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 wait. I don't owe anything to the Levitical law. I don't owe anything to the priests or the Levites. No slam on them, but I'm not a Jew. They don't accept me. They don't, I'm not part of that. I'm going to the guy that, that, that healed me. I don't care if they call me clean or not. This guy, Jesus, he healed me. I'm going back to him. Now, Jesus' final words there is your faith made you whole. His faith, this guy who had no legal right to go to those priests, He had no legal standing to go to the Levitical priest and receive a cleansing. He wasn't a Jew. But he was heading there in obedience to Jesus when he went, wait a second, Jesus healed me. Why am I going over there? That's what I'm trying to say today about liturgy. This is, let let me go over here, y'all. This is what I'm trying to say about liturgy and about ceremony and about many, many, many things. You owe nothing to that system. We we owe nothing to Judaism. We owe nothing to the early church in the sense of, you think your worship service and your church service now represents what the early church was? I have no idea, neither do you. God's worship is in spirit and truth is what Jesus talked about. It isn't about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about the Spirit of God in you, revealing Christ Jesus and giving glory to the Father. This is what it's about, about Him in you and you in Him. If His words live and abide in you and you abide in Christ, then things are good. You're cleansed, you're righteous and holy because of the free gift of salvation and the holiness of God which declares you righteous. It's His holiness that declares you righteous. He did it because Christ paid for it. And because then you're in Christ, you're clean. You're clean. You don't need to go back to the priests. Our high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, has declared us clean and whole. Our liturgy, our ceremony, our allegiance is to Christ Jesus and his finished work at the cross. Okay, let me put this in perspective. We owe nothing to Catholicism. We owe nothing to the myriad of Protestant religions. We owe nothing to the Baptists or Pentecostals or to Mormonism or even evangelicals or even any variation of the church. But we do owe everything to Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the beginning and end of everything that is real, authentic, and genuine. He alone ushers us into the Father in heaven without condemnation or guilt. He alone is the door, the way to eternal life. He alone is Lord. And most of all, He alone is our Savior and the Savior of the whole world. Our Savior. I don't want to be like Jesus, and I don't want to emulate the acts of Jesus. I don't want any of those things. You can't do that. I need a savior. That's why I went to Jesus. And he can begin to do this other stuff in you. And you can do the works that he did and even greater because you came to him and said, I need a savior, dude. I need a savior. I mean, I need every part of my life I need saving. My health, my my business, my family, my thoughts, everything. I need saving. And so it's then that he can begin to work on you and realize his free gift, his supply, his grace and loving kindness from the Father, from God, through Jesus, and by the Holy Spirit in you. Things are going to happen. So enjoy the ceremonies. 
it, the enjoy the liturgical brilliance, enjoy the warm traditions of our faiths and cultures, and go back and serve others as God leads you, and work with others, and work for them as, as, as God leads you. But never mistake these elemental things for Christ Jesus and his love for you and I. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on thing above, things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Whew. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amazing. Elemental captive. Are you captive to the elemental principles of the world? Touch not, taste not, special days and seasons and months. There's nothing wrong with them. But I got news for you. They're just stuff. There's only one thing that we owe allegiance to and one thing that brings us salvation and one thing that is needed. And that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. And that is to remember we owe him everything. And we owe our Father glory for his Son, Christ Jesus, coming to this earth to die for us. So I pray for you today in the name of Jesus, for every one of you who are facing tough times, every one of you who may have family members that are astray, or you may have health issues or financial issues, whatever it could be, and depression and fear, and there's so many things about suicide nowadays. Lord, I pray for all of these men and women in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that you show them your love. Demonstrate your love through Christ Jesus today. Demonstrate your grace and mercy and kindness. That you do love them and that you do want to be their Savior. He can work through us and do it. Thank you, Father, for saving their family. Thank you for saving their businesses and their marriages and saving their jobs and saving their hope so that people have hope again because God is good and Jesus Christ is good and this world is okay with God, but without him, it is not good. So Father, thank you today for your word and I bless every one of these men and women, every one of them, every boy and girl in the name of Jesus Christ. God is always good and Jesus Christ is always the Savior and Lord.